The wife fishes a strange thing out of the water. When her husband sees her, he screams at the top of his lungs. The woman was working in her garden when she suddenly noticed something floating in the nearby ditch. She carefully pulled the object, which seemed rather strange to her, out of the water. The husband, however, screamed loudly when he saw what he had in his hand. The man immediately snatched it from his hands. Laura, 68 years old, was about to have an incredible surprise from nature. Besides having a background in microbiology and working as a wildlife manager with her husband, she thought she had seen every natural event before. This particular element gave her doubts. Her husband, however, seemed to know better. Only recently did she become aware of this phenomenon. While Laura and her husband were gardening, they found this item. As the news crews arrived, Laura recounted her experience. Often something passes by, but what caught my attention was the unique color combination. The woman took this strange element she found out of the water and showed it to her husband. One of the journalists asked Laura, and what happened next? Laura recounted her experience. My husband, wide-eyed, kicked it in and immediately screamed at the top of his lungs. He seemed to know what it was that I had found. He was snatched from my hands and fell to the ground with a dull thud. My husband quickly put on rubber gloves and waved me away. I was shocked. He claimed I needed to wash my hands immediately because it was dangerous. When it first happened, I had no idea why, but now I totally understand. The 68-year-old woman attracted the attention of journalists, who anxiously awaited the sequel to the story. Laura quickly came in and spent a good quarter of an hour washing her hands. When she came out, her spouse and that golden-tinged element were gone. She then heard Tom screaming from the old ruined barn on their property. He said that he had brought what we found inside to take a closer look. Laura's spouse knew the answers to Laura's questions about the origin of this phenomenon. He slowly approached the barn. He stood at the entrance to the shed and looked inside. The spouse was bent over his workstation with his back turned. In front of him was a huge white plastic container. He made some low noises, which she heard. That's interesting, I must say. Baby, come and see. The gold object had been placed in a container when Laura approached her husband. It had been immersed in a small amount of water. The husband insisted that this was essential because it was not just any object. It was a living aquatic organism known by the Latin name of Pectinatella magnifica. At the time, the woman was still perplexed by this new revelation, and she inquired some more. As she inquired, she looked at her husband's hands and forearms. They were full of irritation bumps. Tom explained the situation while he tried to quickly apply some ointment. It is an animal belonging to the mosses, a very rare mollus in these areas. It seems harmless, but don't get your hopes up. Tom stopped for a moment to scratch himself and then continued his explanation. Bryozones are normally much smaller and should not be found in these areas. As you can see, they cause a lot of irritation to the touch, but this is not the main problem with these animals. They rarely come alone and do enormous damage in the wild. Tom had just said these words when they heard a loud scream outside. She was their neighbor. The 35-year-old woman could see the terrible effects of these animals from her home 50 meters away. Tom noted when these animals come, they don't come alone. He deduced that, given the size of these mollusks, a local natural disaster would certainly result. They immediately went outside to see the extent of the damage. Tom had been right in his prediction. Along the stream, there were numerous of these specimens. The animals had already migrated to the edges of the shore, and the water was a uniform shade of golden yellow. Their garden was partially submerged, and every plant was wilting. 
Since the stream was surrounded by nature, they had to move quickly. Here's what they did. Tom and Laura spent years working outdoors. They were also aware of the unpredictability of nature. For this reason, they occasionally had to take quick action, and that's exactly what they did in this case. Tom took his mini digger and threw a large piece of wood into the river that the clams clung to. A wise decision, but one that did not make the problem disappear. Luckily, the couple wasn't done yet. Tom could already see the mollusks accumulating against the trunk of the tree while Laura tried to calm her neighbor. Thousands of creatures had been pushed forcefully against the trunk by the powerful current. Tom, very enterprising, got into his excavator, drove it forward, and started digging. With the excavator, he dug a new ditch parallel to the stream. He built a water sluice joining the stream with the end of the dug canal. The log served as a dam, directing animals and water into Tom's ditch. At that point, an incredible thing happened. While Tom was digging, Laura had gone to get assistance. Tom was busy widening and making the channel deep enough to hold the shellfish. However, in the end, they had to leave, as is natural. All the mollusks were now inside the new trench, more than 40 meters long. The animals had been trapped when he blocked the passage to the stream. She now had to figure out how to remove them from the ditch. Luckily, she Laura was able to help him. Thanks to her profession as a biologist, she knew of numerous wildlife organizations and there was one of her own in their area. After nearly two hours, four trucks had parked on their lot, as she had indicated. The drivers gave Tom a tour of the trailers as they came out. The vehicles contained four huge water tanks, more than enough to move all the shellfish. Furthermore, with the help of around 100 villagers, including Tom and Laura, they managed to collect all the creatures from the ditch and place them in containers. Unbeknownst to Tom, something amazing was in store for him. The water pocket bryozones were returned to their original position. It is still unclear how they managed to find Tom and Laura. In any case, people considered Tom and Laura great heroes. They were named honorary citizens for having prevented a major catastrophe for the community. With the help of the local government, they transformed the old barn on their property into a research facility so Tom and Laura could better study nature. They were enthusiastic about their new location, but above all because they had preserved nature. At the end of it, we hope you enjoyed today's story. If so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And as always here at Spread Channel, we try to make things positive and interesting for you. So please give us a thumbs up. It would mean a lot for us. Thank you for watching and see you soon.